And there are different ways that we can do that. So we're going to talk about how we can control and operate vertical circulation. The first thing that we're going to consider is how do we actually get the areas separated? Now, if you've used VSIM in the past, you might have used the Z offsets for things like gradients and, and, and the like, or in the links, you just put in the gradient percentage. Well, in VisWalk, uh, when you're using the pedestrian tool, you're really going to want to use these, these offsets and levels. So the first thing we're going to talk about is creating base levels which give you a default offset that you can use so you don't have to offset all the vehicles to the same thing. The other thing that creating different levels will do is also allow you to create different security zones and things like that because the only way to traverse between one level and the next is through a ramp or a staircase. Um, so that reduces how many walls or obstacles you actually have to create. So for example, if we look at our Farragut West model here, we have uh, three different levels. We have the street level, we have the mezzanine level, and we have this platform level. If we look at any particular area, the, vert the Z offset of a particular area is zero. But what we can see is that these areas are definitely separated vertically. And so what we do is we go into the base data menu, and under levels, we can see that we create some default offsets for each one of them. So that's what we're going to start with on our platform here that we're going to build out. We're going to the base data menu and we're going to come down to levels. And we have our base level, which might be our street level. We might create one that is our platform as well. So now that we have our platform level, um, what we can do is we can create different Z offsets. Now, depending on how you want to do this and how you want it to look in 3D, for example, if I'm in 3D mode and I pan down, you can see how we can cut down below the ground. So if I create a level that is negative, it will be below the street surface. So you won't be able to see it through the aerial maps. So that's something that you'll have to decide. So for example, if I put this at negative 30 feet, this platform level, and then I flag these areas as being on the platform level. What we'll see is when I switch into 3D mode, you can't see them when they're above the aerial imagery. But when I pan down below the aerial imagery, you can see how we have now our, um, our subterranean levels. So that's one way that you could look at it. You could also just offset the street level up instead and so everything is visible above ground it just depends on how you want to do it and you can actually see that um, that uh, i can move my level offset dynamically in real time so that way uh, we can kind of establish where we want everything to be right so we're here we're at negative i guess i'm in meters so i need to switch this actually over to um, my, I need to switch my units over to feet because I've been typing in 20 meters. So I'm going to switch my units real quick over to Imperial. And so this should actually be negative 20 feet. There we go. That's much more realistic. Well, now that we have our different levels, the question is, how do we connect our different levels within them? And the first thing we're going to look at are stairs, ramps, and landings. So with staircases, these are the, the default objects that allow you to connect different levels in our network. Uh, so let me jump over into here. So instead of having a area connecting these two, I'm going to delete these areas. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select ramps and stairs, and I'm going to define a staircase. Now, how you define a staircase is very important in terms of the order in which you define it. So if we look on the aerial imagery, we can see we have a staircase here. So I'm gonna start at the top, and I typically go in the direction of primary travel. So I'm gonna start by drawing the length of the staircase. That's very important. You should always start with the length of the staircase, and then you would draw the width of the staircase. And the reason for doing that is because it always takes uh, from the start, first place you click to the second place you click. So the starting level in this case would be up here, be our street level, and the lower level is our platform. 
So now that I have a street level and platform selected, you can see that now I can select the stairway option. If I, if I have the same level, the stairway option is non-selectable. So I'm gonna select stairway. Uh, we could do rise. And if you're doing like a seven or an eight inch rise, that's uh, 0.587, I think, if I remember right. Um, and it will automatically calculate how many steps you need. So it's taking the difference in our levels, it's dividing it by a rise, a consistent rise. And so you can see now we have ourselves a staircase heading down below to our subterranean level. Once you have one staircase you, you have defined, we can just copy this over to the other side. Now, if we look on the other side, this side has a landing in the middle. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna define a staircase going in the direction of travel. I'm gonna call it a stairway. Uh, my rise, I'm gonna do 0.588. And then uh, here with landings under our geometry, what we can do is we can define, okay, do we want a straight staircase or do we want a straight with one, two, or three landings? So if I select one, two, or three landings, I can define how long each of the flights are, and it will automatically put in a, uh, a landing for me, and so I can position that landing in other locations. I'm gonna bump these up above ground so you can see them a little bit easier. So here we have our, our 3D staircase with a landing. And again, you can define various different types of stairs and landing combinations. So if we look here, stairs and landings, you could have straight with no landings, you could have straight with multiple landings, uh, you can have angled staircases, U-shaped staircases. Uh, the reason you're not seeing any spiral staircases or anything like that is because a stairs just goes from one level to the next. So it's not gonna have multiple levels that it stops at. So in this case, if you wanted to create, for example, like a fire staircase, you would create a U-shaped staircase with either one or two landings, and you would just duplicate it and rotate it multiple times. And then that would give you your, your, your staircase. Okay. Now to get a little bit more complex, we can take our staircases and we can give them a moving component and create escalators out of it. Now we have some pre-built escalator uh, details with regard to the railings and, and movement and things like that. And if you make a, a flat escalator, well, now you have a moving sidewalk. So we have also moving walkways. If we look at our Farragut West model, the way the Farragut West model flow works is as you come in, these first escalators are the ones that give you access down to the platform. And then the second escalators are for people coming up from the platform. So unlike the stairs, escalators have specific directionality. Um, and so when it comes time to create an escalator, you're gonna create an escalator the same way that you would create a staircase. So if I create an escalator right here, for example, you'll just start drawing a staircase as normal. The only difference is you're gonna select the escalator option. And this will automatically give you your width with your balustrades and you can configure your handrails and balustrades and sockets. You can also configure your movement. When we say direction of travel forward, that's going from start to end. Reverse is going from end to start. And the reason we have a reversible option is maybe you have different scenarios, an AM and a PM, where maybe you have a bank of escalators, right? Like this one, where you have three escalators where the left one is always going up or sorry, the left one's always going down, the right one is always going up, and then the middle one can switch directions, right? Depending on AM versus PM. So in that case, instead of redrawing your whole ramp or your whole escalator, you just reverse the direction that you want to build. So in this case, uh, we just built out a quick escalator. When we hit play on the simulation, the steps will actually automatically move. The other thing you'll need to consider is when you build out your escalator uh, under movement, what share of pedestrians are gonna be walking on the escalator versus standing on the escalator? And if they are standing, are they standing randomly? Are they sticking to the right or are they sticking to the left? 
this can really impact the flow of the escalator, the throughput of the escalator, right? So if there's a lot of people uh, just standing there and blocking the way, the flow rates can be limited to the speed of the escalator. Uh, whereas if you have them enough room for people to pass by or wind through standing people, then uh, you're, you're actually gonna get a lot more flow, especially on uh, escalators moving down. So that's that's how you can build an escalator. If you have a moving sidewalk, then you'll just draw a ramp just like you would. The only difference is you're gonna leave the level the same on both sides, but other than that, you have the same movement and walking behavior and things like that. And now we have our, our moving sidewalk right here. So if you have something like an airport concourse or something like that. Okay. Finally, for vertical circulation, we have elevators. Now, elevators are a little bit tricky just because when we go to put in our elevators, um, in this case, our elevators are on this, on this uh, western side. What you're going to do is you're going to define your elevators as rectangles. So essentially, you're defining the elevator shaft. Now here you'll see a door is automatically created. Now we could rotate the whole shaft or in the list you come down to doors and edge index. You just need to figure out which edge index is which. Um, and so this one, I believe it goes clockwise. So it's a four. Uh, nope, it goes counterclockwise. So there we go. So two would put the door on this edge. Now if you see actual active levels shows which uh, levels these doors are active on. Now, in this case, if we have both active levels on the same edge of the of the um, elevator shaft, then what's going to happen is there's going to be a door on the top and on the bottom, and they're on the same side of the elevator shaft. So if we look here and here, we see a door on the top and the bottom. But what I can do is I can add in another edge index that's on the opposite side, and I can say, okay, I want one door to be on the platform level and the other door to be on the street level. So in this case, we have a door up here and then on the other side, we have a door on the other side. Now you also just need to make sure that your area extends to the bottom of the elevator. The final bit is that you'll need to have a waiting area for the elevator. Now the waiting area that we are talking about is a way to call the, the, the elevator itself. So in this case, um, when a pedestrian steps onto this area, that's simulating them pressing the button to call the elevator. So in your pedestrian area, you'll drop it kind of near the elevator door. And then under um, public transport elevators, you'll say uh, an elevator is a waiting area or this area is a waiting for elevator number one. Here, this is waiting for elevator number one. So in this case, when a pedestrian steps onto this area, they will uh, push the button for this elevator. Now you can have multiple elevators that are acting as a bank of elevators, right? And so in this case, when they step onto a particular area, it would call which either one of these elevators, just whichever one comes first. So there is a possibility to create a bank of elevators. Uh, if you want different elevator groups, you'll come up to lists, pedestrian traffic, and then you see elevator groups right here. You can create different groupings of elevators for different reasons. Maybe you have express elevators and things like that. All right. 